guys, welcome to Ace's place. I thought it was called the bunker. Yeah, aren't we calling well, them? We, we call went them? back and forth about the two. <laughs> yeah, and I then we like decided right well, eventually bunker makes on sense Ace's because place. that's kind of like a canon place. Is but we Ace's said, bunker. yeah. Is, oh. It is called Ace's bunker. We call the it bunker. the bunker. Yeah. I mean, it could be both because it is Ace's place. Welcome to the, the bunker. bunker that is also Ace's place. Welcome to Ace's <laughs> bunker place. I like the bunker. Okay, All in favor say I. <laughs> huh? I. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the bunker. <laughs> is it called Ace's place? No. The bunker name. Bad joke. We were originally going to call it Ace's Place. We were originally it's now confusing. The it's, it is Ace's Place, but it's the bunker. It's, it's the, the bunker. bunker. These Welcome are to the bunker. bunker episodes, and we're so glad that you're here. Welcome Thanks in. for coming in. Welcome. You know what? I just realized uh-huh. they've only listened to the first episode and the prologue so far, oh. which means they actually don't know what the bunker is. So this is a little sneak peek of oh. basically Ace's Place. Oh, this is your hint into the next oh, episode. a little foreshadowing. Yeah. Ooh. Get excited. <laughs> Why do they call it the bunker? What is a bunker? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it called up the bunker? Yeah. The bunker the the is a serial criminal in Woodbine who, if you ever have a bunk bed in your house, he'll he be will there. be in it's one the of bunk the two man? bunks. Yeah, <laughs> you go bunker. to you go to sleep at night, and he'll be in the other bunk. It's yeah. true. Oh and you may God, call him the funny. bunker. And you may be asking yourself, if I sleep in this room by myself, why do I have two beds <laughs> stacked on top of each other? And it's because you're ready for this bunker. <laughs> you want him to be there. You want it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right, let's get to talk. Let's get on topic, y'all. Yeah, let's let's talk, guys. We have recorded a prologue. We did yes, record we a prologue. That's crazy. Yeah. Let's talk for a minute, actually, though, <laughs> before that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let's talk about how it was to create our characters and kind of what like our mm. process was for that. Laura, why don't you tell us first kind of what you were thinking through when you made Eddie? Oh gosh, um, I think I wanted a character that was easy to make because and like easy to play. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, for this podcast, I feel like so much of what was essential for us to like succeed in scheduling, recording, editing, like being able to do what we're doing right now with this podcast mm-hmm. was like we need to make it as easy as possible for us to do in yeah. terms of like game prep and like all that stuff because yeah. we're all super busy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make a character that feels very easy to just like slip into. Mm. Like I understand her pretty well. She's most, I think out of all the characters that I've made in D&D, she's the most similar to me, Mm. which is interesting because I was wondering this about all of y'all. Like, I feel like we've all made characters very similar to ourselves Mm. in a way. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about you, Josiah, though. So I'm very curious to know (laughs) what your inspiration was and like. Because you've never run away from home, you know. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but just yeah, what I think wa- that was my that was my thought behind creating her. Um, it was really fun. I've always wanted to play a bard, but I also wanted to do it like non traditionally, not make her a musical. Um, so I was trying to think of like you know yeah. how does she use her words and her language to basically do what bards do. And, yeah. That's but cool. yeah, I'm That's curious cool. of like what you guys think in terms of like your characters being like yourself because this is definitely the most like close to home that I've ever made a character. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll- Ace, do you want to go next? I mean, the question was thrown to you. Sure. Um, Ace. So, <laughs> Josiah, what I mean, would you, know, you like Josiah? to say about Ace? <laughs> what in the same? <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything, but okay. Yeah. I knew what I said. Yeah, he did it on purpose. Um, so. Whenever we were creating these characters, um, it was during a point in like our main D and D campaign that is not recorded or published anywhere. Um, it was during Secrets. a point where I was doing a lot of like, um, I was putting a lot of energy into that character, mm-hmm. and that's that's a character that I've that I think reflects a lot of who I am. Yeah, in terms of like his personality and all that. Definitely. Um, and so I was very focused on that. And this was just like, I was viewing this as just kind of like a fun new thing to just kind of like, um, it, it was just more about just having fun with you guys. Sure. And I made uh, initially Ace's character. I threw that together so fast <laughs> and I'm going to be honest. I was not invested in it at all. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't really give him much because I didn't want to spend too much time time thinking about it because i just frankly i i had other things i was thinking about at that point Mm -hmm. um so but over time inevitably i think um there were 
there was just me that came shine through a yeah. little bit. Yeah, like I, I, you started to see more of like who I am in that character over yeah. time. But it, de- it definitely didn't start that way. Yeah. Um, and it was not. Uh, uh, and granted, I, this is with the understanding too that we've only seen Ace for the prologue in the episode one so far. True. No, the listeners haven't listened to any of the other episodes yeah, yet. This is right. True. Right. So <laughs> you'll you'll notice that. Uh, <laughs> It, the like if you think the character is like a little bit like lazily written with the details <laughs> oh. you're given at the beginning it's because it was um, <laughs> but but get excited for but where get excited we end up because going. like yeah you know o- over time there's uh a more of a an arc mm-hmm. that happens but i didn't yeah. like i didn't really plan there on being much like i i wrote more backstory to be in the background and didn't really have much plan for like a character arc to happen mm-hmm. like throughout the yeah. actual thing yeah i get that i don't think Alyssa, what about you what about your character a little bit about tell juniper. us about your, how you made oh. juniper yeah what she so goes, we're recording huh? a podcast what? Right <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. threw in a ma- just for the listeners <laughs> as we asked her that question she threw a massive <laughs> handful of sour patch kids it in was her only mouth. one actually but it was just really and chewy. just could not open I her know. mouth <laughs> 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 Just it kidding. was one singular sour <laughs> I'm just kidding. LOL. Yes, making Juniper. I honestly, it took me a really long time to figure out who, what kind of character I wanted to make. Um, I don't know. I was going back and forth on a lot of different things. And um, we had a few times where we all sat down together and we're kind of like, what do we want to do? And like, whatever. Um, but I would say the same thing as you, Laura. I definitely was like, I really want to make a character that is easy for me to slip into and um like that her her mindset and kind of that kind of stuff um like comes to me kind of more easily Mm -hmm. um yeah for similar reasons of just like life is busy life is crazy and we want this podcast to be fun and entertaining and you know like a good thing and so I think um us being able to um effectively tell the story and effectively like I don't know, not make it just feel like, uh, I don't know, not make it feel like a weird random character and rather like have thought process behind our actions and stuff. Mm-hmm. I felt like it was going to be easiest for me to do that, especially my first time recording a podcast um, to, yeah, do a character that was kind of like me and thinks kind of like me. Um, so obviously there are different aspects of her that aren't quite who I am. Um, I have... <laughs> cut that <laughs> <laughs> oh man i have to remember we're only on episode one um that you will learn <laughs> there are different things about juniper that we will come across um but yeah i really had a lot i'm she might be my favorite character i've ever played actually wow i'm not sure well wow and, like full transparency you've i mean you've played some characters that have aspects of you Definitely. and your first one your first one in our normal game mm-hmm. as friends that we don't record. Mm-hmm. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, definitely more than so the second that you've recently played. <laughs> but like, even that, like you were still trying to learn really how to play D yeah. at the time, so yeah. it wasn't like yeah. Well, even the first one again, like I don't want to spoil things that come up in further episodes, but I think my one of my other characters was very much just like the mother figure of the yeah. group and whatever, and it's like Juniper has aspects of that but there's also just like a lot more to her Mm -hmm. and i think that kind of Mm -hmm. helps i don't know i felt like that even is more reflective of yeah who i am and stuff so anyway yeah i i yeah it's i would agree with you laura yes this is definitely a character that reflects me well what about you joe yeah i would say the same for me like i mean everyone said the same thing but it's true like for me it was I wanted to play a character that I knew I was going to enjoy playing. I've been basically DMing for the last couple years Mm -hmm. and haven't actually played a long-term character for a while. Um, And so, like, yes, I wanted to play a character that, like you said, was easy to slip into but and record a podcast on. But also, part of my thought process was I wanted to play a character that I could play for a really long time, potentially. Mm. Um and that was not uh and and the easiest way to do that is to just play a character that was very much like myself because sure. I'm going to do that anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and what I think's kind of 
cool about this podcast specifically and the way that we've made our characters um, is the show itself really is kind of our friend group yeah. doing all of traveling to all of these places and doing all of these things with a DM just telling us what goes on. And so I think that's kind of a cool aspect to all of our characters too. Like how everyone's brought it up is like we be, even though like some might think it's kind of boring that you make characters that are basically yourselves for us. It's really fun. Cause we just get to, interact with each other and react to things in yeah. sometimes overly dramatic ways which you'll see sure. and but like very similar ways to how we would process things and how we would deal yeah. with situations well um, and, and something stuff like I think that. Yeah. something we've all talked about outside of the podcast is like as silly as it sounds I feel I mean and again <laughs> as we're recording this we're only one episode and a prologue in right but but we've recorded a lot yeah we've recorded a handful now um, and I, yeah, as silly as it sounds, I feel like I've actually learned about each of you as oh, my yeah, friends. Oh yeah, we've talked about this a lot. Simply from this podcast so and much. from these characters. Like, yeah. and yeah. obviously we are not the same as our characters, no. yeah, but there are little no. like ways that we will, that our characters will think through things or react to things that I'm like, oh wait, that kind of shows me a different side of each of you, which yeah. I think is really fun. Very much I think so. that's cool. And that's honestly, we've talked about this. Like that's something I love about D and D in general. Even if a character isn't like super like you, I think, yeah, in our main campaign with our whole group of um, friends, I have learned a lot of things about each of our friends just because of aspects of each of the characters they've played. So I think it's honestly D and D as a whole is a really fun way to get to know your people 100%. other than yeah. just being around them. Yeah. It actually it's shows true. you little facets of them that you maybe would never have seen otherwise, which I think is so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do want to say I like my character. I'm not, my character is not myself. Like I want to make yeah. it clear sure. that there's a lot about my character that I based off of other people too. For sure. Yeah. And like, right. it, and there's a lot of like immaturities and things I see about the way or basically in the way that I created this character that like, I feel like are not necessarily myself or Definitely. things that I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like oh, from sure. experiences I've had. So I want to make that clear, Definitely. but I feel like there's also the other side of it is like, no matter how much you try to create a character that is not like yourself, you're always going to bring parts of it Definitely. of yourself too. Because yeah. you're you. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. So I think there is like an element of that, especially since the four of us are very close. Mm -hmm. Like we let those walls down a little bit and it's like, yeah, yeah we, there's a lot of trust in the way that we do the improv. And yeah. so you find pieces of each other in the characters and the scenarios we play out. Yeah. yeah. Very much um, so. It's yeah. so fun. It's very fun. It and I totally fun. agree with the, with the getting to know each other part. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. that's sure. a cool so, thought, Alyssa. To kind of move the conversation along a little bit, let's talk about the prologue yeah. itself. Um, and kind of how we, cause the prologue itself for anyone who has listened to it is a little bit of a different structure than the normal episodes right. because it's not yeah. one dm and it's not as improvised as the rest of the show and obviously we market no. ourselves as an improv show um but maybe we can talk a little bit about kind of just the structure of the prologue and why we chose to do it that way um and and how we went about that yeah. something i would love to point out just from the beginning is laura i loved your idea of following a little moth along like that was yeah. such a great that was such a good idea and such a fun like tiny little thing that Thank like you. I just well I, the crazy yeah. thing is like I never planned for that to be Prospero. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. which is hilarious. We, yeah. We thought about it like after recording Cal's thing. Yeah. Remember That's at the right. end of it we yeah. were like we were like oh we were like, shoot, wait a minute. That yeah. should be Prospero. And it was perfect. Yeah. Like it was so yeah. perfect. So like big props to was an awesome idea. It was cool. Such a fun Thank and you. I loved like it I don't know it uh, like it immediately brought me into like the cinematic nature of the moments that you were describing of yeah. like following this moth along like it felt like it was just, I just loved it. That was a great way of storytelling. Thank you. So that's my props. little like film side of me coming Sure, out. Yeah. yeah. I also <laughs> I also did that specifically because because we're not 
doing like an established lore filled world. Like we obviously talked about Woodbine and where our characters come from and our backstories and things, but we're not like establishing a whole world for one DM to guide us through. Right. I was really thoughtful about like, okay, well, it's basically about small moments and presenting the yes. small mm. moments and then being yeah. like, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. So yeah, I was true. more intentional about like the way when I, when I thought about how I wanted to start the prologue, I was way more intentional about like, okay, well, they're seeing the town for the first time. And then we go right into the character. We go right into like flying by the seat of your pants. Like, I don't know what's about to happen next kind of situation because like we knew that we wanted to end up at the observatory and that was different from every other episode we do because we don't know where we're going to end up. The main bulk of it was still like, I don't know how we're going to get there. We just have to trust each other to like yeah. figure out how we're going to get there. Yeah. So like I, I was more thoughtful about like trying to do like just a little moment and just yeah. following moments. Um, but I yeah. Loved it. I thought that was so fun. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Thank you. Very, very fun. Yeah. So appreciate that. basically we all talked to each other about mm. what we kind of wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and DM'd for each other. Um, yeah. And, and we like gave enough pieces of backstory. Yeah. Yeah. Which was so fun. Like that was also just a cool thing it to go fun. like DM to DM. That was a neat little, yeah. like we've never done anything like yeah. that. that I, cool. And I think for the most part, it was like, it, it's not even like the, any interactions were that heavily planned. It's more like we gave, no, not at all. like we knew who was DMing each character's intro yeah. and we just gave that person like the backstory we'd written. Yes. And that was, and yeah, that, like, was it. that was basically, yeah. that was a unique scenario in which, each of us as DMs were able to prep a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like we each yeah. took a minute, whereas like our other episodes, we don't get to prep at all. Um, like we actually had a moment to be like, okay, like what do I want this to look like? And I mean, even still, I don't think we put a ton of prep into it, but like, yeah, that was unique yeah. in that way. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious to hear from everyone, like what character attributes and like what things about the world you like, discovered and learned during the prologue because of the improvisation like improvisational nature of the show oh. like if there were things that were introduced yeah. that you were like oh i wasn't planning on going with this but like okay we're going with it and this is part of my character <laughs> now and like honestly, i'm just very curious honestly i um i was not necessarily planning on juniper being so terrified in front of the uh the what are they called? The town hall, or like the, the yeah, the, the town hall. Yeah, like I, don't I wasn't planning what, on her yeah. being like super nervous and like whatever, um, but for some reason ended up being like really nervous about mm. it. And then I wasn't planning on her being like, like when she went out to the whole group of like protesters and whatever. Just like her interactions with them were just so not what I was expecting them to be. But I was like, this is fine. This is fun, and like, yeah felt like oh, okay this is a very she puts on a she has a very like sweet innocent nature to her that i wasn't necessarily planning for i feel like that was hmm. something that i that was interesting for me <laughs> yeah yeah i'm trying to think i i, I don't want to speak for everybody but i think mine because laura you ran mine yeah mine was like pretty structured i remember going to you and being like this is what i want uh, yeah. Like I want to do this moment. I want to have this thing. I, I think I don't know what I said specifically, but something yeah. on the along the lines of like, why would you get caught? How right. that happened? Um, but so well, basically, I, I like setting that. up that he's in trouble. Yes. Yeah. And he, then reversing but for that. a different yeah. reason. Yeah. Um, but I say all that to say like mine was pretty structured. So in terms of like things I wasn't really expecting, I wouldn't say a lot. However, what I really liked was. Um, some of the things that you described, actually, I'm not going to spoil anything because, well, you guys don't know some of it, too, uh, for later in the season. Mm. Um, but some of the things that you described, actually, in the intro as the moth is, like, flying through the town. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I have taken note of and have been like, ooh, that's kind of a cool mm. thing. And I should and maybe I'll bring that up later yeah, somehow cool. or like we can expand on that Ooh, so pay attention everybody <laughs> yeah um but like I, I think that was what i really liked about those intros was the yeah like you said laura like the little moments and the little things that make the world feel so lived in even in mm -hmm. those three minutes that that happens 
um, like the the mall or the strip mall that Josiah kind of brought up, and the shop that uh, Ace goes into, and yeah, the little shops that you describe on the way in uh, with the moth. Um, all those things I think were really fun, and I I, I like those little details a lot. Yeah. Hmm. I think does that answer your, the question? I think it kind of does. Yeah. 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 I think I think for um. For my character with Ace, I I just um, because I, I wasn't really sure what kind of uh world we were going to uh paint at the beginning, which is part of the reason why I had him as like a hermit living in the woods, coming from that <laughs> background. So that way, there That's wasn't like a lot a of pressure on me around. to establish like uh <laughs> like what his home situation yeah. was at first, because. Sure the town got I, so i kind of cheated i let the town get fleshed out and then was like I found a way for um uh I, like I, I had like a lifestyle attached to his background but i didn't have like uh, a visualization on like what that looked like mm-hmm. um and it, so my safety net was he lives in the woods because <laughs> there's <laughs> woods everywhere, right? Did you expect oh, Skylar to run into you in the hardware store? Oh, yeah. no, was, I no, wanted to I ask not, about that. I was not ready for that at all. Oh um, man, that was that, that was, was a real so curveball because I that was not in my backstory at all. I think um, we had thought that you were that like one. a pretty, pretty like famous, popular dude or something. Yeah, right? like he w- Yeah, and that was that was part of that was it. Um, <laughs> that was part of my backstory. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so Alyssa that. found a really creative way to uh, <laughs> like show Franklin. that, as <laughs> yeah. opposed to just like uh, yeah. me having some sort of interaction where it's just like explained in a really lazy way. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. he used to be like the popular guy. Like, yeah. She found a way to just like create a character out of that. Mm. Um, yeah, I love which is like huge so problem. Skylar Alyssa is great, and, and it'll be fun not for the, yeah, It'll be fun may for may the not. audience to see. Kind of, you know, what happens with that interaction and after. <laughs> and Skyler's <laughs> backstory. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and that's where we want to come to our next part. We are announcing a new spin off show all about <laughs> Skyler. Yes. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Bro, it's just Skyler I'm in the going Skyler through life. quest line. Yeah. The Skyler <laughs> quest line. Listen, guys, if you want it, we'll make it happen. You let <laughs> yeah. us know. Yeah. Drop a comment below. When we <laughs> get to a certain amount <laughs> Where's of, the Skyler oh, spin-off? of Patreon members, a Skyler. <laughs> one shot it'll be, be a special yeah. in our in our patreon for our top tier subscribers and I'm she will pumped. go on an epic quest. we'll do a one shot where I'm just so Alyssa plays skylar and then all three of the rest of us dm juniper's taking it oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> listen I, mean, I do have to to bring it back though i do have to say i totally agree josiah and like props to Alyssa because that is really smart storytelling to be able hmm. to say like there's this aspect of your character that i want people to know about or i want to pull out Mm -hmm. as like the dm here but i'm gonna show it and i'm not gonna tell it and like i just props to you thanks you're you're (laughs) that was great i'm learning (laughs) i love too that like you like we saw some of our first instances because he Ace was second, right? It was it was yeah. Cal and then Ace. I think so. We saw some of our first instances of like really funny improv. Yeah. With like some no where butts you throw there. people yes. a, a yeah, yeah. with yeah. some no butts. Like <laughs> like Ace was like, Well, I like I definitely said goodbye. And then Alyssa was like, No, I don't think so. No, and also there gone. was a search party and you were <laughs> gone forever. <laughs> and, and, and Josiah and slash just, Ace were like, Oh, that's so right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was and it was really funny. I just changed the yeah. narrative. But it made, yeah. it was a great no butt moment, yeah, but it was funny. Su- it made such a yeah. And what our reference to no butt is, typically in improv there's a yes and, or and a sometimes no but. we like to throw in a no, but yeah. <laughs> and that's fine and it's really funny. Is that it's, helpful always? Maybe not. Sometimes sometimes not. But it's a good time. But yeah. if you listen, if you can we're do here well, for a good time, not great. a long time. We <laughs> hope we're here it for a long time. It makes a great like and subscribe yeah <laughs> if, if you can do it well it's great and that that, that specific one yeah actually again no spoilers sets up a lot yeah. of stuff <laughs> later really good on story. yeah exactly. that was really great yeah of people being yeah. like oh dang oh you're my god still you're around. alive yeah we thought you all died <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah that was so fun it was great because that was like it was uh, pretty explicit in my backstory that he <laughs> left a <laughs> Uh, no. Oh, was it actually? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh no! In there. I just fully. And so just, <laughs> yeah. Her specific words were, 
I don't think so. I think there was a search party for you. <laughs> and I was like, that's actually, hilarious. I don't think so. Yeah, oh, my honestly, to this day, we don't know if that was Alyssa saying that or Skyler. Yeah, it was, I think it was Alyssa. And I was actively pulling up my backstory and trying to show her. And then she was just like, no, we're going. That was so funny. So I don't funny. think so. That's you, hilarious. It was a search party. Oh, yeah. so funny, man. Changed the course of history, you could say. Forever. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Laura? Was, was there anything like... Um, yeah, that kind of, you were like, oh, this is an interesting world building thing or, uh, you know, yeah. to answer your own yeah. question. She was, yeah, she, she was a lot more, like I, I started playing her and I just decided to make her a lot more immature than I realized I wanted her to be yeah. mm-hmm. because I realized like there's a lot more, there's a lot more interesting character moments and story moments when you can choose to take a negative acting choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like instead of just being like my character's perfect and they see this situation and they know exactly how to react to it in a way that a healthy person would. It's actually way more interesting to see flawed characters. And so I was like, I'm going to make her more mature. And I like di- wasn't planning on that. Like yeah. literally like rolling the natural 20 and being like, oh, she perfect. She was perfect at this. She was able to steal the candy bar. Now she's going to bring it to Cal and say, look, I'm cool enough or whatever. I was like, no, she would she would have like okay she has a deep-seated like (laughs) like insecurity and she lies to herself oh she's a bard that works perfectly and like Mm -hmm. she's a good she's a good liar even to herself and so it's like she's convinced she still didn't like get away with it and so Mm -hmm. she like puts it back and like i like basically like in the moment finding choices that made her way more specific to me so Mm -hmm. um, yeah that's cool yeah and it's fun because the dice in themselves like present things where you have to go oh okay yeah. Like wasn't planning on this, but mm-hmm. oh that's cool. And that yep. opened something up I didn't realize. And like yeah. so it's yeah, very isn't it fun. So and fun how that like I mean and obviously yeah. that's just the nature of D and D and playing with dice. Yeah. But like it's so cool the character moments you get out of just it silly really dice rolls. Like yeah. and it's we so have cool. some again, like, I not love really Nash- a spoiler, but we have some great ones in this season already. That were that completely are just, yeah. unplanned. So unplanned. Like, yeah. super natural. And, like, that's the thing is, like, we love a natural 20, but we also love a natural one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Oh, a I'm a big time. fan of a natural one. Yeah. Like, it's just fun. One other thing I do want to say is, like, especially when I think about characters and creating characters, it's so hard for me to do that without understanding them in like the context of relationship mm. and so for me like i had this idea of who edna was and i was like this is how i'm gonna play it and the voice is easy because i'm not doing an accent and like all this stuff but it wasn't really and i like did the whole intro and stuff but it really like i called juniper or edna called juniper during the intro because ultimately like for me mm-hmm. when i find my stride in a character is generally because i'm able to understand this person in relationship because we like as humans we like change depending on who we're around or we're impacted by who we're around so for me that was when i was like oh this is clicking i'm kind of seeing more about her like (laughs) i'm figuring out how to play her a little more because i'm like interacting with you guys so that was it that was an interesting thing that leads into one of my favorite things that i think has ever happened to us or that we've ever done uh, when we were all planning our characters, we were trying to figure oh, out. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it's ever. so funny. Are so, you ready to tell the world yeah, this moment? I'm ready to tell the world this moment. Okay, I am. All right. Laura, That's are you okay you. with this? Oh gosh, oh, no. <laughs> it's so funny. This was the funniest. This thing is the best I've thing ever we've witnessed. ever done. So, <laughs> in what you're saying, like we were when we're coming up with characters, we care about how they relate to one another and whatever. And so there's there's a part where you're kind of like I almost want to play test this character and see if it's any good (laughs) and so we were all sitting around one day and like I'm on the couch like Laura's sitting on the ground Joe's hanging like the boys are hanging out and I was like well let's just see if we like these characters before you continue can because I watched from okay sure can I say what I saw (laughs) sure yeah yeah go ahead go ahead Joe (laughs) take it away what I hear I'm like pacing trying to think about what I want to do and Alyssa goes do you just want to like try it these characters out <laughs> and Laura goes sure and I just hear Alyssa go hey <laughs> <laughs> and Laura goes Laura goes oh hey <laughs> and that's where we stopped and, then they stopped. <laughs> and, and then immediately we were like this is weird I turned what are we doing I was like are you guys playing house <laughs> like what are we doing 
there's just something about oh, it's just man. different. Yeah. But anyways, continue. Well, well, no, just it brought me right back to like <laughs> it was just this moment of, and I think we actually said we were like, okay, like let's pretend they're in class together. Yeah. And then I like <laughs> leaned over and I was like. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> it's just like for like context for oh, us, like so we funny. all four of us have been friends for a long time. Um, but like Laura and I go back to literally birth. Like we've been friends forever. I'm sitting here indicating yeah. towards Laura as if anyone can see me, but it's fine. <laughs> um, or as if she's in the room for that. <laughs> yeah, this is also true. Um, yeah, no, but we. Like we have been, we grew up playing house and like, do, we yeah. know, you know, like being kids, playing house, doing whatever. And so in that moment, I was just like, oh God, we're seven again. <laughs> yes. Dude, and I was oh my over gosh, there like, for oh real. God, they're seven. It was so yeah. funny. And then I was like, yeah, no, you can't, you really can't do this without being in the context of D&D. Oh. <laughs> or yeah. it's just really it's a problem. So it funny. was the best oh. thing. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, to hilarious. your point, Laura, it's super, it really matters like as you're coming up with a character to understand how they interact with the world and you have to be in the world to to get that and so even like yeah in any campaign we've ever started it takes a minute to get there because like our characters are always kind of weird for the first few sessions because you're just like who is this how does she how do they act like yeah you just kind of have to like yeah you yeah. get there eventually yeah. so you, you'll see that in you also in like, this podcast you also have to uh, like and this is true of any D and D campaign ever. The first session or two, you have to railroad it at first. Yeah, a little with bit. The characters. A bit. A little yeah. bit, not a whole lot. There's there's a way for that to uh, have a healthy balance and a way for it to get out of hand. But like, um, well, especially as you're introducing the world. Yeah. So so there are there. It's like it's very intentionally um, collaborative and sensitive to like what other people are doing. Um, yeah. But then once once we found our groove um, and you'll see this again in uh, episodes further you you see kind of where we uh naturally like fall into place at a certain point and are just free to make like really cool creative choices and then tell yeah. a really cool story together because we've we did a good job of like i think establishing yeah. things in the 100%. beginning and to that that's actually a good transition point yeah um, i was because, about to say the same thing <laughs> yeah the good segue because you're right like we we all thought the same thing too of like we segue we wanted to establish how our friends or our characters knew each other as well as yeah how they started this whole thing but actually episode one if we want to jump into it mm -hmm. yeah. starts yeah. a year yeah. after yeah. the first right. the prologue so because we wanted the characters to feel established and yeah. like they were friends yeah. and like they know what's going on um, which is why we decided to script the prologue a little bit more was because we all wanted to go in with you know established friends and not just start episode one with like oh what's gonna happen who's this person right. yeah do we hate each you other because we yeah. had a structure i guess that we wanted to yeah. do for the show yeah it wasn't obviously. like scripted yeah. but yes it was right. very it was structured we had intention and every episode after that has been yeah. a similar structure yeah well and i think yeah. it's fun that we did the time jump too just to be like uh, that left us a lot of room to kind of improv like okay like here's what happened in the year and like throughout the following episodes we kind of talk about little things that may have happened over that year that we were like that we skipped through you mm -hmm. know and stuff like that i think mm -hmm. that's really fun yeah um yeah. yeah yeah well do we want to jump into episode one so obviously yeah yeah let's Josiah, do it you took that one yeah you had, yeah. To you had the a first one wild card yeah that's and it, right. was a, it was a really <laughs> great time wasn't it it was really fun yeah, I'll ask you an opening question for this. You kind of were already somewhat ready for because we had talked a long time ago on a different podcast that we won't name, and you had brought that <laughs> idea up. Yeah. So um, what? Why won't you name it? Okay, it's called Joe and Joe's Podcast <laughs> of Everything. I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Look, sick it, plug. Yeah, we, it, it's it's yeah, a guys, show that it we recorded like what six episodes for, or yeah. put out. Six Stop episodes. listening to this yeah. and go listen to that. Yeah, False. Don't, don't no. do that. Yeah, don't listen to that. No, no. listen to this. That, that doesn't exist. Terrible yeah. marketing that, that show. It's right horrible now. marketing. You Joe. guys told me to say. <laughs> <Joseph>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was. Um, I think we were talking about um, one shots. Yeah, like we just wanted to. This just was like in an episode. a year or two ago. Yeah, in an episode, we were just like, let's, uh, let's just come up with like a weird, like one shot idea and just kind of like flesh that out. And then you know, if people listen to this and decide it's cool, they can use it or whatever. Or maybe we'll use it in the future. And so I had 
a loose idea of like thinking it'd be cool as like a Halloween one shot to have a situation where uh, the the party is tasked with like helping this old lady who's got like uh like whose backyard is like a corn maze almost <laughs> and they have to like like maybe they're looking for something or they're trying to fix something or help her in some way and like as they were introduced to her she like mentions like uh, uh like a husband that had died or whatever and then like they're going through the maze and then they like find him and then uh realize that she's like uh uh you know that she's like locked him away or something and is like really evil and then starts like trying to kill them uh with like gardening equipment that's or something so, so that was, was my very, idea for like so this like fun. horror one shot and i just like we talked about it on the podcast and uh mulled over the idea and like went back and forth mm -hmm. uh with some different ideas for I it actually and then forgot about it no I, offense yeah and then in my mind i just like tabled that as like oh maybe i'll run it as a halloween one shot at some point um and then Whenever got we rolled what role. we rolled, I was I just remembered it. And like I like, totally is. forgotten about it, and I just remembered that, and I was like, "Oh, cool! I kind of have like a skeleton to work with here. Now I can apply it to this." Yeah. yeah. yeah well, okay. Cool. So then I'm curious now when y'all because we've recorded more episodes than episode one, even though I'm not. So we don't have to name episodes because we haven't gotten sure. there yet. Viewers have, or listeners haven't gotten there yet. Right. But like when y'all think about being sort of on the hot seat where you roll to be the DM, and you're like, "Okay, I'm just going with it." Like, sometimes there's things that we can't control. Well, every, every time there's things right. we can't control. Like, the genre and the hook and stuff. But, like, how often do you go in with, like, a general, like, idea or, like, a concept? Do you have, like, a few ideas in your head and you're like, okay, like, whatever comes up, I'll just apply it in some way. Um, like, how do, you, yeah. how do you mentally prepare to DM when you can't actually prepare? I'm very curious. Well, I'll, I'll say quickly, because I'll turn it over to you guys. But I'll say... <laughs> And you can probably hear it in a lot of episodes. Usually when we roll something, something, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm, I just, I, I'm built good different. at it. I'm just built different. <laughs> but like, um. I'll like immediately, whatever comes to my head, I just go like, oh my gosh. I like, I really hope I get this one. Or like, this would be like, I've got such a good idea for it. And probably half of them, like most of them haven't come to fruition, but like half of them are probably terrible. But like, I don't know. I just... <laughs> Whenever something's rolled, whatever is like the first thing that pops into my head, I'm like, I'm like, that <laughs> is probably fun and funny. Yeah. And like, it would be cool. And I try to expand on it. Yeah. I don't know why. Mm. I just, I feel it's like. how your brain works. Yeah. yeah. I, it's awesome. how my brain works. Immediately when I hear two of those things, I just put something random together. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm definitely not as good at that. I need to, like, it takes me a long time to like mull over something and come up with a concept. And then once sure. I have a concept, I feel really strong in it. Yeah. But yeah, that's interesting. I would say, honestly, for me, I mean, you'll hear it in the episodes when I eventually DM and whatever. Like, I've been very nervous to DM because I have never outside of this podcast. Right. Like, that's I've yeah, I've never done any DMing. And so um, it doesn't come like very naturally to me and stuff. Um, and so I'm always like every time I'm kind of relieved when I don't roll well. <laughs> I'm like, oh, bummer, but, I'm not DMing. But audience we have told her multiple times <laughs> that her episodes are some of our favorites you <laughs> yeah 100 such a good Thank job you. yeah, yeah 100 you. really percent very kind well yeah and and it's funny because part of something that i've been like was trying to figure out even like for both of the episodes again i'll give no spoilers but like i think i've dm'd two at this point um maybe three i'm not sure um but the ones that i've dm'd i did not go into it with like any plan at all like because you know we're talking about like oh you could have like a loose idea of something you want to do but i've kind of gone into it with nothing at all um which is scary and i'm like oh god like i need to come up with a few like very loose ideas i think that might be helpful but like even still yeah the nature of it is we get so much thrown at us that like we don't know how it's gonna go like whatever so yeah i mean i'm not i'm not putting much prep into it at all and i'm just kind of like i mean it's that's the really awesome thing about like us as players and like having y'all like when i'm dming having y'all as players like i know you'll take little tiny things i throw at you and really run with them and basically sure. flesh out the story yourselves yeah so that takes the pressure off of me to be like okay well i know that they there will be some little thing that they'll latch on to or they'll 
they'll make funny or draw me out on and then you can kind of build a story off of that and kind of get there yeah, yeah. um but i think the other really interesting thing about the way we've chosen to do this with like the whole like prompt in the whirlwind book is like you kind of have to like quickly come up with something yeah like, you can't you just like go be like eh, we'll see yeah, it's 100%. like no from the start you've got to have something so that's been that's been fun to almost like come up with the prompt and then be like i don't even I fully know what this what means, means. Yeah. But we gotta, we're gonna get there <laughs> and, uh, and it's always worked out and it's always like i feel like the moments that we end up with are just so much cooler than they would be if we planned yeah. them. Well, and yeah. not to, sorry, I don't mean No, to but we need off. to go back to episode one. I'm talking well, about the future too much. No, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I was going to add one thing to that and then we can go back to episode one. Uh, but this is what this show is. We just, we exactly. Talk. Uh, and you know, uh, we were sitting in a Taco Bell parking lot not Classic. too long ago <laughs> after, I don't know, ninth or 10th episode. Yeah. Um, I don't even know. and, and we were talking about what's also cool is you're right. Like, we all sometimes the DMs just lay down a, a order in the whirlwind, and then the re, but they even have to figure it out themselves. But it always adds these cool moments, and not only that, we talked in this Taco Bell about yeah. how like we talked Taco also Bell like, way too much. Just yeah. want everyone to know. There's that. also like clear like lessons, yeah, or like takeaways, like moral takeaways, yeah. That yeah. we're always like, yeah. this episode was really good in terms of just, like, for example, the first one, to go back to the first one, the first episode's a really good example of, uh, and uh, showing of us just kind of trying to learn how to work together. Mm -hmm. um, mm, like, yeah. in how we behave, like, there's a big kind of arc of it of, like, Cal and Eddie don't really get along in terms of where they should go yeah, and what they right. should get, mm -hmm. and they're kind of yeah. arguing the whole time. People don't know what aisles they were supposed to be shopping in and yeah. like, think people are <laughs> yeah, wrong yeah. and and then we go to the place and it's kind of like a little bit of a chaotic mess where mm -hmm. we don't know what's happening but then at towards the end of it we all have to like band together and everyone gets yeah. a job of like you hold the door and you do this you hit and the rock you <laughs> hit the rock for for a while <laughs> and like hilarious. but but it's kind of like even that like you see from the beginning of the episode to the end how we even just learn to work together yeah. in that one yeah. episode yeah and trust each other yeah um and you know it's not a spoiler but something to look forward to it we kind of have those types of takeaways in pretty much every episode yeah. i don't know if there's you yeah. can tell that we, that we all grew up watching veggie tales uh, <laughs> <laughs> josiah what was your like like what were some of the unexpected things when you were dming that you were like okay we're running with this like because it was really we'd done a few like test improv one shots and things like that because we had another concept for the show spoiler alert listeners we did have another concept <laughs> that we ended up scrapping and workshopping yeah. and then rebranding and then coming up with this yeah. yeah but it like i guess officially it was kind of the first one so like how did you feel like you had to adapt to us as players and to like just even the format of the way that we were doing this like session so uh, something that's i i mean i this is probably not um unique to just me but um i you know I, I have i had before this episode dm'd one or two uh, like you said like other one shots similar improv one shots and i always find it really exciting that i am yeah kind of working collaboratively to build this world with everybody and so i usually i'm like joe in the sense that i can come up with a concept uh, relatively quickly um, when given a prompt. Um, but then that's it. And then in addition to that, I also, because this is how my brain works, I come up with like just random comedic bits that really don't have anything to do with anything. But I <laughs> oh create God. a checklist of those things first and try to see how many of them I can hit um, in the episode. That's, that's amazing. So that's for, brave. Yeah. And so for... <laughs> And, and it kind of gives me a way to, like, have an interaction that kind of, like, goes for a while and, like, my players can, like, laugh at how ridiculous that is while in the background I try to, like, think through some other things. Yeah. So it's it's a little bit more involved than maybe just putting a door in front of them because that's, mm -hmm. like, an old DM trick, too, <laughs> is, like, you know, if you want to add 15 minutes of, like, mental prep time, just put a door in front of your players. That is players. true. Um, Rule yeah. Instead of a door, I put, like, a stupid pun or I do, like, <laughs> I make... I, create this whole interaction that's based around one dumb joke in my head 
and <laughs> let that buy me time because it's far more entertaining, I think. Honestly, banana split was yeah. something I wrote down um, in like that minute and 30 seconds right. when I rolled to be DM. Yeah. That's a uh, wild way of taking that's it. That's hilarious. That's it makes so much sense on. for the way that his oh, brain works. So I much. love it. Dude, general, general goods. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that can be a whole thing. Generally good. I'm so, I was so glad that it was. Um, so funny that that... It, and it's like knowing the amazing. people in, in your room, too. Like, I know that if I do this this way, they'll run with it this way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of fun to do that. And, um, like, uh, another example... So like when Joe says, oh yeah, Cal grabs money right in that moment, I had to be like, okay, so I, I now have to come up with how currency works because he wants to steal money. Right. So then in that moment is when I had the idea like, oh, it's like acorns mm -hmm. or wood chips yeah. or something and they all have like names or logos on it. Money and is I, a tough one. Yeah. Money is a tough one, but I wanted to, yeah, like I just, just said the first thing that came to my head. And then mm. as questions are asked, it's just like, it's it's just a game of catch in a sense where I just like <laughs> yeah. come up with one response for one thing that happens and then try to make that fit with the last thing I said. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I, yeah. I say things that contradict what I just said. And then we get to roll with that and I get to try to, you know, dig my way out of that hole. And sometimes it works, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. And we laugh about it either way and it's a good time. Um, but yeah. What was the question? <laughs> it was just interesting. It's like, I, I think it was a really fun and interesting first episode because we really were like, okay, we're in it and we're playing these characters now. Let's try and figure it out. Whereas like, you know, as we keep going, I think there is more of like a rhythm to it. Yeah, so definitely. the the first episode, but it was very well done by you, Josiah, because um, th like we're like literally flying by the seat of our pants and <laughs> yeah. the story, the story was really fun and the setting yeah, was very fun. Yeah. I liked it, it was a, a good way to start it off. Miss yeah. Ruby is fine. <laughs> Miss Ruby is fine. One, one thing um, that I did intentionally, and uh, maybe I want to ask you guys uh, about what you thought of like, uh, uh, like how your character felt in that world and what you had space to do. Because I think I did intentionally create something that was very simple and very small like in terms of like the complexity of the world that I built for that episode, like how did you, like how did your care? And I, I couldn't answer this cause I wasn't playing my character. Really. I would like answer questions yeah, sure. if they were asked, but I wasn't really involved in it's character. Hard. It's but hard like, to do at the what, same time. What did it feel like to be playing a character? Like, uh, like were you able to envision like, uh, like, did you have, like, a good picture in your head of, like, what that world looked very like? Very much so. Yeah, or I, I think, think I so. did. Yeah, I mean, it was very rainy. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was. It almost felt to me like a western town, that, but it was, like, pouring rain with cobblestone streets and... Yeah, that's uh, gray wood. You know, yeah, a lot of gray wood and, you know, but it, I, think, I think it was very well done. I think what we've all learned as well from this, from what we have recorded so far is, like simplicity is is yeah enough and yeah. sometimes yeah. more than you need yeah um, like you like we're not expecting each other to make a whole world and society in right. 10 in 10 seconds yeah. or whatever but yeah. we're also learning that like keeping it simple and having some of these key little things like a general goods store and bananas split and mm -hmm. a creepy house with a creepy backyard. It's like really Where the kids all throw you rocks. need. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's really all you need to do a two and a half hour episode. Like yeah. we don't yeah. need mm. the DMs don't have to come up with a ton of stuff to keep us entertained because yeah. we as players know how to yeah, like you're saying, drive most of the story. Um, but if we can explain those things well and really put a picture into our players' heads, then. You know, that's all you need. And I think you did a great job with that. I could easily see where we were and the house and everything. Yeah. I think the other really good thing about actually taking, yeah, m keeping it kind of simple like that is, again, it, it leaves room for us all as players to kind of help build the world. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like we, we can add in little things that we're like, oh, I see that thing over there, <laughs> you know, or be like, hey, like you with I'm the peg leg. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or but even just like, you know, you'll be like, oh, I'm looking I'm looking for a cigar shop. Oh, yeah. You sure. know, and it's like, OK, well, that gives because Josiah hasn't established every shop that's in town. 
was that in that first right. episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Okay, first. because Josiah hasn't established every shop that's in the town, that makes him. That means that he can go. Actually, yes, there is a cigar. You yeah. know, like that kind of thing. Yep, you're right. So leaving it open ended gives room for yeah for us to kind of throw our own spin on it. Yeah. The while not stealing one, the DMing. The toughest one is definitely currency. Yeah, that's it's a weird so one. It's so hard. Yeah. Because you don't, don't want to be like do. <laughs> US dollars. Yeah. But also like yeah. dollars is like a normal word for currency. And you don't want to just do gold. And you don't want to just do gold everywhere. But it's like it weird. makes sense. So well, like, we're also like how do we tough. get items? Like when we go shopping, yeah. we're like, what do we do? And you <laughs> you play a character that immediately makes a big deal out of that currency. Wants yeah. right. the currency. It's, very, <laughs> it's very funny. It's yeah. <laughs> and like I I sometimes feel bad about it because I'm like currency's like one of the harder things to come up yeah. with on on the top of your brain. But like Cal would one hundred percent look for the currency yeah. there. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's a weird you thing. You gotta be ready for that. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna um start writing a list of just ridiculous currency sounding ideas. currency ideas and keep that tabbed <laughs> away for later. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's so, fine. I guess we didn't really fight anything in episode one, but we could have potentially fought Grandma. D- d- did you use Juniper? Fought that rock. I, I will fought say. a rock. Yeah. You fought a rock. Hardcore. <laughs> did you use a step <laughs> That was crazy. For Ruby. Uh, so I was throughout the course of telling the story, I was trying to decide what the, cause I knew there should be an element of combat and I knew that I wanted her to be like a crazy, scary lady that was like chasing you guys. But I thought it would be much more fun to kind of like milk the stress of being of the pursuit sure. rather mm. than. Uh, have her catch up fighting. to you really quickly yeah. and then having to like fight this old lady and i wanted to have like a uh, nice like uh redemptive ending to it i guess mm-hmm. um mm. like i didn't want you guys to have to yeah. like, like kill an old lady yeah. so <laughs> i would have been a heavy episode a so pretty <laughs> oh pretty gosh. early on, like when you guys were in the general goods store that's when i was like thinking through like man do i really want them to like slaughter an old lady or like should <laughs> i have her be possessed yeah. And then you guys started talking to the shopkeeper there, and I was like, okay, I I think he was, uh, like, I he was one of the guys who went there, and so we'll just say he's, like, you know. Somehow. Under well, I, and I think I said that, too, earlier. Like, he had returned and been different or something. So, yeah, I, I was, like, I, I always had the option, like, I knew uh, to have it be anything because I knew immediately that I wanted her to, like, not be in control. Like mentally, like not actually be, yeah. So, I the, the thought the thought crossed my mind like maybe you guys could fight her, but I was like, let's let's just have them hit a rock really hard <laughs> for an arbitrary <laughs> amount of like I I assigned it a CR, um or uh, sorry it's I a CR of zero. <laughs> yeah. I, I established like the uh, like how many hit points it had or whatever, um and then realized it was too high how many did you give it do you remember like 80 <laughs> i think i gave it we hit that rock a good amount of times i think so i think what happened was i gave it something that was like it could have been more than 80 and then i remember <gasps> after the first attack i realized that we did four that damage. we were still level one and so <laughs> yeah I literally like cut that 12 hit points and still took too long <laughs> that's funny <laughs> And so I was That's like, hilarious. I was getting closer. And then one round later, I was like, oh, she's still closer. Oh, she's, she's not coming. there yet. She's not there yet. Oh, it's a long hallway. She's on her way. <laughs> Always longer when you're on the other side of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's magical oh, hallway. Man. It keeps getting bigger. Yeah. It takes her a while to get down yeah. the stairs. Oh, door, doorknob's rattling now. <laughs> oh, That's my funny. gosh. The doorknob's just rattling now. <laughs> well. That was funny. You did a great job. Yeah. Especially yeah. very the fun episode. episode. You set the tone, you know? Yeah. 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 Thanks. It was so a good, good time. Yeah, it was. So good. Well, well guys, anything else? I think. Thanks for listening yeah. to episodes one and the prologue. Yeah. yeah and people. now the first bunker episode. Whoa. We do so hope you keep listening because we have some, uh, we hinted at different things, but we have some really exciting oh, stuff that comes up. So much. Like I was just thinking about this as we were sitting here. Like I'm so excited for people to get to hear these fun stories. I know. Yeah. Like we have. Like, I just, I know that it's, like, weird because we're, like, biased and in them, but I just think they're such cool stories. They're really good. Yeah, like, they're very awesome. fun. I think they're super yeah. fun. Yeah, I'm really excited yeah. for people to tune into these Bunker episodes and realize that we, you know, maybe sometimes didn't even 
put that much thought into <laughs> yeah, it and yeah. it just kind of happened that way <laughs> exactly, exactly but that's the well, point that is the we're point. here to show you that you don't have to put a ton of thought yes. into it and you can still make a really gripping fun yeah. enjoyable game with your yes. friends yeah you don't exactly. know what you're doing no, that's a good way don't. that's a good little point to end on because it's like it truly yes. is about like having fun creatively with your friends yeah and that's and why we are doing this podcast yeah we're yeah, doing it yeah. as much for us as yeah. it is for yeah us. honestly if it's an excuse more. for us this to play together you. <laughs> this is for us <laughs> <laughs> well thanks yeah. for tuning in everyone yeah we appreciate yeah, thanks, it guys. and we'll see you next time for the next episode wow. we say everyone to our hopeful listeners we don't know yeah, yeah we'll but. see yeah we'll how see. should we peace out of bunker episodes we gotta have a fun way to sign off